Dave Williams, editor here with today's video. The systemic suspension problem with the FZ07 from Yamaha. This is one of those great mysteries of the universe. Why do manufacturers engineer the suspension with some of these catastrophically bad problems? In this video, Dave explains the problem and then, of course, provides the remedy. What a guy! You need to be able to pick it up, which we can. So that means you're safe. You can pick the back of the bike up more than you can pick the front. Okay. So that tells you engineering-wise it's not even remotely close to the same. Yeah. Stay there, Dave. Look at the bottom of the fork for static sag. So, so there's plenty of static sag. So if you have an FC07, point number one, do not ride. Point number two, pull the spacer out of the forks and shorten it by 10 to 15 millimeters. If you're light, under 140 pounds, 15 millimeters. If you're heavy, 10 millimeters, i.e. over 140 pounds on up. The fork oil in that bike is way too thin. So if you're light, you use 15 weight oil. If you're heavy, go rewind if you can't remember what that number is. You're gonna use 15 to 20. If you're over 200, you're gonna need at least 20 weight, possibly 30 weight. The rear shock will work for seven to 14,000 miles, depending on your weight, frequency of use, and level of abuse. Poetry, isn't that clever? At that point, you've got two options. Collect brand new shocks that people throw away because they upgrade and put them in and use them for 6,000 miles and recycle them out one after the other after the other or invest at somewhere around 4,000 miles in a shock that has preload and rebound as a minimum so that you can adjust the tension appropriately and then as the oil ages, set the rebound correctly. Those are your bullet points. Get to work. Bone stock? Yes. Did you change the forks out yet, or fix the forks at all? No. Okay. Uh, and a stock shock. Mm -hmm. All right, so, do you work on things? Yeah. Can you use a pipe cutter? <laughs> One my buddy can. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh. come around the front, count the number of bounces. Okay. That spacer in here is 15 millimeters too long. Oh wow, okay. Because there's no static sag in it. <clears throat> so that spacer needs to be cut with a pipe cutter of 15 millimeters, okay. deburred, and put back in. And you need 15 weight oil in the forks to replace the OM oil, because when the spring energy is stored and released, the oil can't damp it. Okay. Which is why you get, so, fixing the spacer length, adding much thicker oil immediately will make all the difference in the world to the handling of the bike. Okay. So that's the first part. <laughs> On the back of the bike, you need to be able to pick it up, which we can. So that means you're safe. You can pick the back of the bike up more than you can pick the front. Okay. So that tells you engineering wise, it's not even remotely close to the same. Yeah. So with the back, if you look here, there's nothing, but up here is a staircase. So with you sat on the bike, if it's somewhere between 30 and 40 millimeters, it's okay. Okay. If it's more than that, then we have to go stiffer on the spring. So, we're going to go from two fixed points. So I'm going to go from here to that corner, which is 562. All right, take a seat. Feet up. 562 to 526. So, you're right in the zone. Okay. So the tension on the spring doesn't need to change. That's like a car shock. It has a life expectancy because mm -hmm. it's not serviceable. And on these bikes, somewhere around 
8,000 to 15,000 depending on your abuse and frequency of use mean that's got to go. Okay. Everybody throws those away and puts in an Olin's, a JRI, a Nitrod, bag as many as you can that are brand new and just keep putting them on every 6,000 miles. Oh wow, okay. It's free 99. Yeah. <laughs> the tension that's on the spring now is fine for you and your weight, but that's urgent. Okay. So, case of beer, I don't know what it's going to cost to get it done. <laughs> but. No, yeah, my buddy can definitely do that for me. And if he's got questions, he can come over and I will reiterate to him exactly what has to happen. Okay. You're out of here. All right, thanks, sir. Stay on it. Sit on. Yeah, roll it back. Cool. Okay, you. you're welcome. <laughs> what year is your bike? Uh, 16. Okay, how many miles? Uh, about 5,000. Okay, have you changed anything on the bike at all or is it stock? Um, I have changed the exhaust. Okay. Um, levers, just kind of the basic everything that you would do, basic mods. To fit Nothing you? Too intense, correct. Handlebar is still um, the same? Yes, um, I did adjust my rear shock. Rear shock. Um, yep. And that's pretty much it, I think. Okay, take a seat. Take your time, no rush. Okay, feet up. Now, would you like the bike softer so you can get more of your feet down? Um, I'm tippy toying as it is right now. So. Right, so if we could make it softer and slightly lower, that would be good. Okay. So, that is 120 with you on it. So feel the spring in your back. If we soften that tension, that spring will be a lot less. 70, okay, dismount for me. And as you only got 15 millimeters of sag in the back, that would make a lot of sense. Because you also have zero static sag, so you're the second kid on a trampoline. Got it. <laughs> so. It's, fun. it's been fun though. Okay, if you say so, geez. <laughs> So we need to get, can we get any softer is the question. <laughs> so I need to go. So you're right at the very strongest the spring yes. can be. Is there any reason for that? Um, I just felt like it'd be kind of, I don't know, I just I liked it that way. I didn't seek professional No, that's okay. So you made a choice and you went with it and yeah. this is where we're at. Yeah. Okay, much better answer. Excellent answer. Okay, all right. <laughs> See, now I can pick it up, so you're safe. The other part about having a spring smash flat is you're gonna ballerina. Yeah. I, and there's no reason yeah. for you to ballerina. Yeah. That's a choice. Yeah. Not a motorcycle should give you that choice. Right. The other part is that the forks are way too high okay. for, for what we need. And because they're really high, they've got no grip, so lowering these through 10 millimeters is going to make a big difference for you. But the space of this in here is 10 millimeters too long. Okay. If you simply cut, cut the spacer down 10 millimeters, the front end will become comfortable and quiet instead of smash in the face. And that smash in the face is this, that won't stop. So cutting the spacer down 10 millimeters will take all that away. Is that what you're doing? Like, do we have to machine it like down 10 millimeters? Pipe cutter, deburrer, yeah, you've got to make it. Or you get some other material. So, where, so where's the spacer? Is Undo it this. Yeah. Watch your eyes. Well, the foot prime oh, it'll fly off. Oh, yeah. So you've got to cover it with a rag so and do it carefully. Kind of keep it there and slowly kind of let it out. Well, you unscrew it carefully. Yeah, yeah. 
one leg, this leg first, because it's the least stress, right? Take it out, measure it, have it cut, okay. put it back in. It's literally just the spacer, just literally. That's it. That's all it is. And thicker oil. So have the space it takes a little bit of time to do, and it's cheap. If you've got the tools, it's free. But the oil, taking the forks off and changing to 15 weight fork oil. And then 15 weight fork oil. So now it'll be close to the ground. This, instead of it being up here to the bloody moon and really hard to steer, corrects the geometry based on the way the bike collapses under your weight. It's all balanced. So instead of fighting to turn the bike and constantly off throttle or braking all the way around the corner, now when you initiate by rolling off the throttle with the geometry change, it'll turn easier. Okay. Way less energy, way less fight. Sweet. Okay. Next one, in. Dave Moss can tune your suspension no matter where you are on the planet via his remote tuning service. Contact Dave on Facebook or by email, dave at davemosstuning.com.